Hi, my name is Karim Benamar, and I'd like to talk to you about how you can design your own money system. Now, when we think of money, we think of the bills and coins in our pockets, and that is money, but it's only a few percent of the money we have these days. Most of the money we have are points in bank accounts, and when we pay for something, then these points get deducted here and added there. They don't actually really travel. Um, and if we look back in antiquity, money systems were always like that. They were always accounting systems where people kept track of how many sheep were owed or how many hours or days were worked. And only later on did we get coins and bills. So it also works the other way around. If you have a point system, if you have an accounting system, you basically have a money system, whether you have tokens, bills or not. And the question then is, why would you set up such a system? Well, what you do with an accounting system, what you do with a money system, is you make economic activity possible. You stimulate economic activity and you stimulate complex economic activity so that people can do something here, they can specialize, and then they get buy all the other things that they need with the tokens or the money that they get, the points. Uh, people can save for the future, people can trade globally, people can do uh, complex transactions. Uh, and it also means that when you don't have a money system or there's not enough money in a, in a situation, not enough liquidity, as they say, then not enough economic activity takes place and you have a recession or a depression or you have a depressed area. And so really, if you set up your own point system, you could stimulate uh, economic activity. Now, why would you want to do that? Uh, you might say that in, in your local area, um, the shops don't, have, don't sell enough or there's not enough activity that people prefer to buy in big stores. And then you would set up a local currency. You could say that, for example, when there's recessions, there's not enough Swiss francs to go around. So you set up a system that companies can trade with points with each other and not have to pay in real money. Now, that system is called the Veer and it's existed in Switzerland for more than 80 years. Um, you could set up all, all kinds of other systems. If you have a festival and you don't want people to lug cash around, you sell them little plastic tokens. Um, and then you could say these tokens are only valid to a certain time or a certain, in a certain way. It can only be spent at these stores. So really, when you set your own currency system, um, you can stimulate activity, but you can also set kind of rules or boundaries. You can decide that it's only valid to a certain date. You can only say that it can only be spent in a certain group, etc. Now, if you had a problem, say, of refugees not being able to uh, work um, and not being able to earn normal money at the moment because they don't have work permits, but there's a lot of activity that needs to take place and there's a lot of people that want to work, you could set up an alternative uh, currency system for refugees. And some people have come up with that idea. You could also say, for example, in places where there's a lot of unemployment or places which are very depressed, but there's a lot of people still wanting to do things, you could set up a system uh, by which they keep track of, of expenditure and actually develop the economy that way. Um, so if you wanted to do that, if you have a situation, it could be a very small situation among a group of people, or you could have larger ambitions and you wanted to stimulate activity, human activity and human value and economic activity, you could do it by setting up your own system. Now, there's two things you need to be careful about. The first one, the most important one, is trust. Uh, the adage goes that uh, you know, any fool can set up their own currency. Uh, the trick is to get it accepted by other people. Uh, so make sure that your system of points is trustworthy and there's all kinds of technology that can help you do that. Uh, the other is you need to decide in, in some system, most systems, uh, how many points, how much liquidity you're going to put into the system. If you put in too much, then the money becomes worthless and you get inflation. If you don't put in enough, uh, there is not enough activity that takes place. Um, so these are the, the two main concerns. But what you're really building is a system where people can still make com complex individual decisions. People, everybody's making the decisions that they want to make around the currency, whether they value it enough to, to, to buy it or trade it or whatever. And you're just setting up the system. So it's a wonderful way to set up a system that is actually going to help people and work people. So if you want more information, there's more information on the website. And uh, if you try it, uh, let me know how you're getting along. Good luck.